everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this adorable mini faceted gift bag. So I've done the large faceted gift bag. This is the smaller size. So you can see the little faceted detail there. I've got this gorgeous bow, little tassel, but the best bit is this necklace handle. So this was a necklace that I found in a charity shop. So I've used half of it for this bag and then I'll use the other half for the other one. It was 50p, but they're beautiful beads, real metal. Then you've got those mother of pearl pearl style ones there these lovely little kind of diamond shape and I just thought the colors went perfectly with these papers which I'll share with you in a moment I've got a little velcro dot there and then you open it up and you have this kind of larger section open it up and it's quite roomy because this sticks out you have actually obviously got a little bit more space down there as well but perfect for a little bit of jewelry all those nice little gifts that we like to give. And this would look lovely in Christmas papers. You could even hang it on the tree. I think that would look really nice as well. Or as many of you do, and I do as well, just keep on display in your craft room because that's why we like doing this as well. So we get to look at these things. So let me show you how to make this really pretty bag. Okay, so I've got a few tools here. I've got my corner punch. You don't need this, it's not essential, but it is just a nice little touch. Crocodile, just because this is the one I use, but any hole punch will do. But I've also got this hole punch here, or this screw punch, because if you do want to punch within a, a larger surface, then you can use that one. Tool. That's the necklace. So basically what I've done is you can imagine when it was together, that was, say, joined there, and then it would come all the way around and you'd have this nice big necklace. So I just took it all off the wire, tried to keep it within the pattern, and then just redone it for this one here okay on this nylon thread then with the rest of them I've put them on another piece of nylon thread and you can just see I've just done a knot there just to keep it together until I go to add it onto the bag now the nylon thread is really really strong I'm going to be adding a few reinforcements so that the nylon thread doesn't rip the cardstock and yeah that's how I've done it so again you know I know some of you do make jewellery I used to make jewellery so I do have lots of bits and pieces lying around little kind of clips and fastenings and stuff but whenever I'm in the charity shops I do look at their jewellery and sometimes they have bags of broken jewellery as well and they're always handy. If you get this nylon thread, very cheap, it's about a pound there for 50 metres and you can make lots of lovely handles. So we'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a moment. This is if you want to make the tattle, the tattle, the tassel, so I've just got some baker's twine there and this is for the tassel which we'll talk about later and again all of that. So it uses one piece of 12 by 12, this is using the beautiful, let me grab this one here. So this was the Cartabella paper. This is the, what was this one called? Botanical Garden Collection. This was another one that the lovely Kimmy sent me. So Kimmy, I just wanted you to see what I've been creating with these. The other things I'm doing are gonna be some really nice mini albums and they're gonna be for myself because I want to be able to enjoy and look at those papers for much, much longer. So it's one of the ones from that pack. You can buy them individually as well. I'll try and share some links but it was a gift, so I'll do my best. Okay, so one piece of 12 by 12. Now, the way I'm constructing this is actually how I done my handbag treat bag, which was a couple of years ago. I'll link it up here, and it has a very, very similar kind of, you know, like I said, the way I put it together. So 12 by 12, and this is gonna give us that handbag. And if it's, yeah, if it's directional, I'll do these score lines with you first. So if you've got directional paper, which ideally you don't really want when you make a handbag, otherwise the piece at the back might be upside down or the piece at the front might be upside down. So try and go for something that doesn't really have a direction, like this lovely one here. So along the 12 inch side, I'm gonna score it three and nine, okay? Then rotate and I'm gonna score at five and seven. Then I also wanna score at four and a half, but just down to the first score line and it's seven and a half down to the first score line. Then flip and do again four and a half down to the first score line and seven and a half down to the first score line. I know this is a busy paper, but hopefully that will make sense. You can kind of see, here we are. So there's that four and a half and the seven and a half. They're just down to this score line here, whereas this was your other score lines that go all the way down, okay? Then to create that faceted effect, we're gonna be working within this rectangle, okay? So you'll have this large rectangle in the middle, quite big, all the way down to here. That's the base. These are the two big sides. And then here again, you've got that other side. So you've got this piece here, and then you should have these two like little tabs. 
but it's within these smaller rectangles at either end that we're going to work with the faceted little bit of detail and it's exactly the same way that I done with the large faceted bag which again will be linked so first of all what you want to do is I'm just going to grab this ruler and I'm going to line it up with the two inch marker here okay so it's just lined up with the two inch marker like so and then you're going to score it six inches down to the two inches okay like so and then flip again line the ruler up with the two inch marker don't worry if it's a little bit further down or a little bit above it really isn't going to make that much of a difference again at six just down to the two inches there okay then we don't need the scoreboard anymore so we put all that out actually let me just quickly give you the measurements for the lid so this is four and a half by six because that's the width of the bag and it's along the four and a half inch side that you just want to score it for okay and then that one we're just going to simply fold and burnish and that's the one where I just took a little bit off the corners there just to round them off okay so that's our flap for the front okay so back to this piece so where you've just scored down to two two inches which you can see here's my line here it's from the bottom of that that we're going to score down to this corner and then again from there down to this corner all staying within that small rectangle don't go over into these pieces here okay and I'll point this all out again when we cut these bits away because it might be a little bit easier for you to, to make sense of but we're going to score down to there so you're forming a triangle shape in here and then you're also going to score from here up to this point and here up to that point all exactly the same way as the larger faceted so I'm just going to do those score lines and then show you again Okay, so now you can see I have this going all the way across. It's not quite a straight line because we've, we've not come down halfway. We've come down to two inches. But just make sure you've got score lines going off to each corner there. And then from the bottom of this six inch line up to the top there and again up to there. Then fold and burnish all of your other score lines. And we're going to do a little bit of cutting and then I'm just going to recap again on that little bit we've just done just so you can see it a bit clearer so I'm just folding all of those main score lines okay then where you've got your little cross section you'll have these two tab pieces here you want to cut down each of those to the first score line like so I'm just going to bring in my longer scissors and then very neatly because this is the front and back of your bag so cut away the score line you're going to cut all the way down and past that piece to that score line there so all we've done is just cut all the way down that one to that score line and this is your tab so it frees it up that tab's going to stick inside to form the side of the bag and then once we fold these pieces it's going to create that faceted style so again I'll show you along this long side here these are those two big score lines you just cut down that one there okay but then on this side you're cutting down that outer one there and that gives you your tab okay so cutting down that side frees up your tab and then obviously once you cut down that one there you've got it then to be able to stick so that one is going to stick in there and that one there and it will create the side of our gift bag then for these folds here this bottom triangle is going to poke out so we want to create a mountain fold either side of that bottom triangle okay then this score line that was the six inch one that just went down to the middle that needs to become a valley and these will then automatically become mountain folds as well so as long as you make sure that middle six inch one is a valley and those two are valleys and um, those two are mountains that is your faceted side just as we did with the larger one and then once we stick those tabs to the side you'll see how we get that lovely side of our gift bag now if you also want to have this as a separate colour you might want to do that plain because that's how I did the larger one because that was more de deconstructed then that would maybe highlight this detail a bit more because this is obviously quite a busy paper but you still get to see it and when it's in you know real life you do really get to appreciate it so then I'm going to cut the same so again along the, the thicker side where you've got that large piece if you just cut right the way down to the first score line so it's, it's cutting this piece then 
and that's what I mean with that tab so then once you remove this section it then gives you that tab okay I'm just going to do the last one so again with the bottom triangle make sure they're both mountains and then that middle needs to be a valley which will then automatically bring the other two to become mountains hold that one in and then again that will all come up like so to form a oh, really cute bag love this now with these pieces here that's what I use to cut a piece for my tassel okay so again we'll use that in a moment and I'll tell you the size of that so don't throw these away they're really nice sizes they're perfect mats you know for cards you know you could do a nice card now with these mats and a nice sentiment over the top so always keep those little pieces especially with this paper because it's so lovely or card because it is a nice thick card okay so next we're just going to do a little bit of gluing so what I would say is just tidy up your tabs a little bit just take off a little wedge from the top and the bottom okay so you can just see I've just cut in on an angle there and that will just make sure that we don't have anything exposed okay. and then with all of your tabs so do one at a time we're just going to add some glue if again you're putting something stronger in this you might want to reinforce the base so you can just cover a piece of grey board in the matching paper along the bottom or just in a plain black or green or something that's going to match your pattern and that will just strengthen it for you so you're just bringing it up so you get a nice corner, a nice right angle there. Okay. And then on the next side, and then fold that one in. Don't worry about the faceted look at the minute. Just get it all stuck down because you can. You've already folded folded it all into its shape, so it will go back into that in a moment. So just make sure you get your sides nice and lined up. Okay. So once you pinch that in, as long as that, like I said, that six inch score line was a valley, it will just it will just keep everything going the way it should. So just repeat that on the other side. Okay, so now we have this. So if you want to, you could just close it with a nice big decorative peg. They have these beautiful kind of cutout pieces and sticker sheets with this, but let me find the one that goes. So this one here goes with this sheet. So you could just cut out friendship there if you were given this as a gift as a friend and just kind of close the top of the bag that way. So, you know, it's quite a nice style. You could also fold that over, see, and you'll kind of start to get that look, but that's not what I want to do with this one. <laughs> so next, we've got our lid, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to create some holes along that score line that we did. Now it's entirely up to you how far in you come, but because I was using the cropper dial, it allows me to come in by an inch. So that's what I did. Okay, so I'm just going in along that line. Okay, so I'm lining this, the cent, the kind of the middle of this hole here with my actual score line there. Just going as far in as I can. So in this case, it's going to sit me right over the pink stripe and just punch a hole. So you've got half of the hole on one side of the fold and the other on the other one. So again, just repeat that on the other side. But like I said, you can come in as far as you want. So if you do have the screw punch, this one, you can come in and do your holes even closer. But whatever your punch, if you've got something that's like this where you're limited, whatever that allows you to do, then do that. Okay, so that's our holes already. Then I went and cut these two silver circles and this was from my bright rosa the flowers i think it was it's just one of the dies there and i thought it was perfect it's got these tiny smaller circles because all my nested circle dies the, the center one's still quite big these are perfect and you can see where i've put them in there and that's the reinforcement that thick cardstock stocks stops this nylon thread kind of cutting in so yeah it just allowed me to be able to tie it off in a nice knot so it was nice and secure but not cut across this here because if you left it like this it would so what I'm going to do is use this now to cut the holes there I could use my cropper dial but it's quite hard let me try actually to try and sit that on there and make sure it's in the center oh hang on though so let's try I can always cut it again Like so, actually I've done really well getting that in the centre. So there you go. Okay, that's what you want to do. You want to achieve, so I'm going to have to do it the same now, so the same size hole. So let me just grab that one, check it on the right side. Because you've got a smaller hole and then you've got a larger one there and then that's everything to use your for your eyelets and 
more fastenings and stuff so let's line this one up again a mm, little bit off that one but it'll be okay I'll have that one on the side where the tassel is so you won't really see it but that's what you want to do okay now if you want to reinforce it some more you can put them on the back side as well so then you want to fold these in half making sure you, again you get your fold so that half of the the circle is on one side and then half on the other all right and then you want to glue it when it's folded over okay so I'm just going to pop some glue in the center there and then sit that over the hole and just keep the whole thing folded while that all sticks together okay so now we have this little piece here so do that again on the other one okay so those two now are all ready then I have a piece of one by one inch squared mirrored cardstock and then I'm just gonna cut it on an angle so from one point to the other okay so I've got two half pieces and then I just popped these in my corner punch you can stick them on there and do them both at the same time if you want but because this is a thick cardstock I'm doing them separate like so and then I'm going to stick them on the corners so I do use metal corners but again not everybody can get hold of these things and you don't always have to do them and I quite like the look of mirrored cardstock as a metal effect so I'm going to just stick those two down and it doesn't even have to be you know mirrored cardstock you could use you know a, just a plain pink so you've got a block colour or something just to add that kind of detail to it so don't worry if you get any glue as I always say with the mirrored cardstock let it dry completely and then just wipe it off with a dry piece of kitchen towel tissue paper or something um, toilet paper sorry and then it will come straight off what's the bets everything when you get glue on something it always lands upside down it's like toasted butter on it or jam always lands on the floor that way down okay so I'm just going to leave those two there for a minute but now we've got those which I think look really cute so then you want to make the bow so another piece of those corners that we cut away and for these ones I used I think it was five eighths of an inch in width no, three quarters so you just want to cut two of these strips so these are just one of the pieces cut away so three quarters of an inch you want two of them and the length will be four and a half because that's what we cut away okay and then you just want to curl these so I'm using the dark reverse side because that's going to be one side of the bow on the front here again if you want to do mirrored you can okay so I've just curl those two pieces and then you're just going to loop them together so I'm just putting some glue on the inside covering about half an inch and then sandwich it together okay and kind of keep that nice and open all right this is how I do the big bow on the big bow birthday box I just done lots and lots of these and then just kind of stuck them all together and that was really good I should maybe share that one again actually because so many of you really like that one it's such a nice size box and just the bow alone is a great topper for just you know when you do your Christmas wrapping okay so then just look at some of the pattern I'm going to make sure I've got both the pinks and I'm just going to overlap one over the other by about again about half an inch so just add some glue there and then stick that over this is just a quick way to make a bow I mean, if you've got dice, all that lot, I know many of you do, you can stick them on, do whatever you want. You might want to do a big flower there, have a butterfly. Okay, then I have this piece here, which is half an inch by about one and a half. And that is just going to sit across the centre and then fold around the back. And there's our bow. When it catches the light, it looks nice. So again, I'm just going to add some glue across there and the back. And just hold that in place for a moment and again just keep those both nice and open now because I've got a little bit of mirrored card on the back I'm just going to bring in my red tape and just pop a couple of strips on the back
Okay, and then I'm also going to pop just a little bit of glue onto this side because it will get flattened a little bit. And then just decide how far down, whether you want it more in the middle. Where did I go for that one? For about an inch up. So use my lines of the paper to keep everything nice and straight. I think that's about right. And then where you put, added that glue, just kind of put your finger underneath just so it's really secure. And bring that up. You've got a cute bow. Okay, yeah, tassels and all that kind of stuff hanging down from it as well. So now we want to bring in our handle. And what I'll do now next, actually, we want to stick this down onto the back because you may not, also, you don't have to add these, you might just want to keep it as a pretty little clutch. Isn't that so cute? So, what I'm going to do now is inside here, just run my glue or double sided tape, whatever it is you're using. Again, decide if you've got a preference to design. I'm going to go for that one. Stick it over the front and slide it down until you hit the top. Make sure you've got it perfectly bang on because they're both six inches wide. So you want to make sure they line up perfectly. Which that does. Okay, so you get a nice look on the back. And now you've got your gift bag. It's a bit clashy in the middle. If you wanted to, you could cover that. But it's all lovely prints, so I'm not too worried. Okay, so now we can bring in the handle. So I did knot off the ends there. Just want to check that's going to be enough for me to knot inside. I think I'm going to have to kind of undo this. Okay, so now I've got my handle. I've just undone the knot there. And I'm going to pop one end of the nylon thread through here. Okay. And then pop the other one through the top of this one. And you can use ribbon, you don't need to do this by any means, it will still look lovely. And I want to make sure it's nice and taut. I don't want any gaps of the nylon thread on the front now. Okay, now because I've got those little metal, faux metal card pieces there for reinforcement, I can now afford to pull this quite tight inside here. And then you just want to, you know, just knot it off, just do a double knot a few times. The nylon thread, it will move, so it can, it allows you to get a really, really tight finish, like so. I'll do one more knot, actually. And the good thing about this, because it's so clear, you can't even see it. So now when I cut that away, you can't see where it is at all. But now, I have a lovely handle. I think it looks so cute. Then I've got my 16mm Velcro dot, so just take off the pair there and just pop that in the middle underneath and then again make sure it's all lined up. It should be anyway but just just to be on the safe side. Stick that down from it. If you go on inside because it's hard to make sure, what did I do? I used my ruler and then you can kind of push against the ruler just to really make sure that that's nice and stuck and then I can lift up and then add even more pressure to each side. Okay, there you go. I'm just going to buff off that piece there. Okay, and then it's just to do the tassels. So this again is completely optional. You might have some nice little charms you want to hang, but this is a piece of three by two and a half. And then along the two and a half side, I scored at half an inch. Okay, so you've got that line there. You don't want to fold and burnish that. That's a guide to where you want to cut. Now there's two ways that you can do this. You can either cut with your scissors and use these ones and just do lots of thin, very fine strips like this. Or if you've got some vegetable scissors, you can use these. And you're just cutting up to that line I keep meaning to cut these. Every time I go to do them, they're just they're they're a little bit fluffy. So obviously they're not really intended to use on paper, but they do work really well when you get nice sharp ones, and I will sharpen these. But now you get all these tassels. And then you can kind of shape them, you can bend them out a little bit, let's add a little bit of a slight curve, like so. And then a little bit of my baker's twine. You don't want too much. I've got there, what's that? about six inches and loop it around and then I'm going to use 
some double sided tape, you can use liquid glue, I have used liquid glue in the past, I'm going to run a strip on the inside and then I'm just going to attach the very ends inside and then you just want to start rolling it on itself and there are dies for these all the, but I just try where possible you know it's just as quick to do this as it is to cut it with a die but whatever works best for you but I do always like to show ways to make these things even if you have very limited supplies like so and there you have a tussle and then I just decorated the top with a little bit of mirrored card just to tie everything together I'm going to just cut this freehand so it's about half an inch maybe a little bit shorter and let's just cut it to about one inch and then I'm just going to curl that and again I'm going to add a couple of strips of double sided tape on the inside and then just pop it around the top Follow the join from before and then just again wrap that around. That's almost perfect. Let me just cut a little bit away. There we go. Okay, so it's joined right up at the back, but now we've got a little tassel. And then you can just loop this through. You might need to fold it around. What side did I say? No, I'm going to do it on this side because that's where I was slightly off with the um, little silver circle. So just bend it around a bit. You didn't want it too long so I'd rather just bend that slightly so it hangs down and then you can kind of reshape it so it's a little bit. You don't want it perfect like so. You can have a gift tag hanging there as well if you want. You can have some smaller little charms coming down. I do have these earrings here that I picked up from a charity shop and I'm going to take them apart anyway so I'm just going to, I haven't got my jewellery pliers on hand but just take it off and now I could attach that hanging on there which I think I'm going to do. I've got two of them because they were a pair and again I think they were 20p in a charity shop but take off the earring because the way that they've done it is just a big butterfly on its own and how cute does that look? I think that sets them off perfectly so that's going to be their new home so you'll see that on in the photos. There you have it, two super cute, very adorable mini faceted handbags. I love the detail of the necklace, I think it's just got the texture and everything, it's just so sweet and I know that this would be kept you know for some time, I don't expect people as I always say to keep things forever and most of the people that get these things end up bringing me back bits like this anyway so they get used again and then there's the other one there. I think they're lovely, I think they're really sweet. So I hope you enjoyed them, I hope I've given you lots of ideas, ways to use other things you might have lying around and what to look out for in charity shops, like you don't have to go and buy all this expensive stuff. So yeah, there they are. So please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's tutorial, subscribe to my channel so you get to see more and I will be back again tomorrow with another one. Thanks for watching, bye!